This is where Mykola Kulichenko was buried alive. The blindfolds, he says, he and his two brothers were made to wear by Russian soldiers, still strewn by their shallow grave. Mykola shows us where the bullet entered his cheek. His brothers, Yevgen and Dmitro, were killed, but he managed to escape their tomb. I had to live to tell this story, not to Ukrainians, but to the world, he says. The regional prosecutor's office says a war crimes investigation's been opened. This is Mikola's house, where he lived with his two brothers and along with their sister. On March 18th, he says, Russian soldiers came into the village looking for men that they believed were responsible for an attack on one of their convoys. And that is when the family's nightmare began. Three soldiers entered the house looking for anything that might link the brothers to the attack on the convoy. They found nothing, but what they did find was something to link the family to the military in the shape of their grandfather's military medal. They also found Yevgen's military bag, since as a reservist in the Ukrainian army, he was preparing to go and fight. For four days, their sister Irina heard nothing from her brothers, until... Mikola came back from the dead. I came home and there was Mikola. I looked at his eyes and asked, where are the others? He said, there are no others. <laughs> Mikola says that after being taken from their home, the three brothers were blindfolded and interrogated in a cellar for four days. They were then beaten and taken to the site of their execution. Two months on, he still struggles to speak. <laughs> what do I think of the Russians? I hate them with all my soul. They are animals. They should burn in hell. It was only after the Russian withdrawal that a month after their execution, Evgeny and Dmitrio were given a proper burial a tombstone, and the peace that Mikola has been denied. Erin, it is in those parts of Ukraine that were occupied by Russian forces for some time that so many of those war crimes are now being investigated. And there is, of course, a sense of relief uh, now in those parts of the country uh, that that occupation should be over. Worst news, of course, for Ukrainians, as you mentioned, in the Azovstal steel pond. This was not their preferred outcome. These had been fighters who'd been holding out. It had been a key symbol of their resistance in their fight against Russia. Russia, therefore, um, confirms its grip over Mariupol. But good news for the families who are immediately involved and will at least be getting their sons and daughter ho daughters home once they're taken back to those border regions of Donetsk and an exchange uh, can be organized there. All right. Thank you very much, Melissa Bell, tonight in Kyiv. And I want to go now to retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, former Army Commanding General for Europe in the 7th Army. So, General, you hear Mikola's story. It is just so, so horrific what happened. Beaten, blindfolded, bound with his brother, shot, buried alive. He was able to escape. His brothers were not. It's a horrible story. And yet, you know, in a village last week, you know, I hear about the, the torture where people's fingernails were ripped off. I mean, the stories that we're hearing are, are horrible. Is it possible that we will still hear worse, worse stories involving Russian forces? Uh, Aaron, you can write that down as it will happen. Uh, we have seen so many horrific things, so many criminal acts, so many acts of depravity and bestiality and, and just horrible things that have occurred in this campaign. We're bound to see more. This, this story about the two brothers is just, to me, uh, just despicable. Mm. Uh, th there have been wars where brothers have fought on opposite sides in civil wars. There have been wars. We have cemeteries in the United States where brothers who have fought in wars together are buried side by side. I've never heard anything like this before, where brothers have been tortured together and buried alive together, and then one survives. Mm. I can understand this soldier's hatred of the Russian people, because just through uh, a second effect, I feel the same hatred. It's just despicable. It's in, it's inhuman, and they okay. should be punished for this. So, what about what's coming out of Mariupol? I mean, we I don't know how many of the the deeply wounded survived. You know, talking to some of the families there, 
Um, some of these soldiers were incredibly wounded. They had lost limbs. We don't know how many survived. We do know that the survivors are now coming out. And that is, is a blessing for their families, uh, we hope. We hope that they, that they will survive. Uh, however, it does mean that Russia now has full and formal control of Mariupol. That is extremely significant. And I wonder, General, if you could put it in context. I know we hear in places the Russians aren't making the progress they want. They're not. They're losing to the Ukrainians. They're not forge, fording uh, rivers. Yet they are in, in now in control of Mariupol which is a crucial city that gives them Black Sea access and a land bridge to Crimea. It, how important is it? Well, I, I'd push back on your premise a little bit, Aaron, because I don't think they're in full control of it yet. We're talking about 300 or so wounded soldiers, certainly amputee, burn victims, yes. uh, burn, excuse me, burn victims, uh, gunshot wounds. But there are still fighters in that Azovstal steel plant. Yes. And they have held over 12,000 Russian soldiers for a period of two months at that site. This is going to be this is going to be reflective of what the United States did in Pearl Harbor. This will be sort of the thing where Russia will rise, or excuse me, Ukraine will rise like a phoenix from this and say yeah. these were the heroes of our nation yes. that prevented Russian forces to go to the Donetsk and other areas in the Donbass to fight. They prevented that from happening for two months, and that is a critical factor in war when you can take forces off the front line of the battlefield yes. and hold them in place to conduct these kind of operations. And it's incredible, as you point out, with so few to hold off so many as they have been able to do. And those who are doing the holding off, we speak to them. I mean, you know, they're talking about drinking water out of batteries. They're exhausted. They're extremely sick. And yet they still fight. General Hurtling, thank you so much, as always.